Hey guys, so um, I wanted to make this video today regarding um, the changes to the new code of points, specifically the MAG or the Men's Gymnastics Code of Points. So for those of you who don't know, the Code of Points is the document which kind of outlines all the rules and regulations um, for gymnastics. And every Olympic cycle um, it gets updated and it gets changed. So this document has been kind of drafted um, over the last couple of months and is, has been released in full fairly recently and I've just read it for the first time this morning. I'm not sure whether it comes into play um, immediately after the Rio Olympics or if it's not till the start of 2017, but either way, um, some of the rules and regulations surrounding gymnastics are changing fairly soon, so I wanted to make this video to talk through what some of the bigger changes to the code of points are and how um, how that actually affects gymnasts like myself, what the implications of those changes are. Um, so one of the first changes which I noticed is um, in the old code, um, obviously you're marked, you're marked out of 10 if you do a full routine, but um, if you don't do a full routine you get a, a lower start value in terms of ex execution. So in the old code if you did between one and four skills, you got an execution start value score of two. Now, if you do three or four skills, your execution start value is four, um, which is quite nice. It makes it a little bit easier to get a slightly higher start value. Obviously, for high-level gymnasts, this really makes no difference because they can easily fill a routine with ten skills. But for lower-level gymnasts, such as university competitors, this rule is actually quite nice because it means that they can build a higher start value on apparatus which they're kind of struggling with and it makes composing a routine a little bit um, a little bit easier. So that's pretty good. Um, the next big change is that each piece has one less element group than it used to. So um, <clears throat> every apparatus has requirements and it used to be that all of the apparatus had five except for floor which has four and now floor has three and all the other apparatus have four. There's pros and cons to this. It means that some of those element groups are easier to achieve and it's easier to get that 0.5 bonus for each of those element groups. But because there are fewer element groups, it means that start values are likely to get slightly lower because um, there are fewer of those 0.5 bonuses to actually get. So I'll talk a little more about that um, a little bit later on. Because there are fewer element groups now, you're allowed to do up to five skills per element group rather than four, um, which is pretty good. Um, and another generic change to the code of points, just um, a judging change really, is that landing with your feet slightly apart is no longer deducted. I think um, FIG have kind of recognised that landing big skills safely and sticking big skills is not realistically going to happen with your legs completely together. So as long as your feet are reasonably close together and you join your feet afterwards, that's no longer deducted, whereas it used to carry a 0.1 penalty. So I like that change. That's quite um, a realistic change from FIG. They can't always expect absolute perfection. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the specific changes for um, floor now. Um, so firstly, there is no limit anymore to how many times you can use a, a single diagonal in succession which I, I like quite a lot. Um, it used to be that you could only use the same diagonal twice in a row, but now there's no limit. You still have to go to every corner of the floor at some point in the routine, but it means that um, you've got a bit more freedom in terms of the composition of your routine. It means you can do more big tumbles in a row before you get into your side passes. So I think that's quite good, and I may, I may take advantage of that when I'm building my floor routine for next season. Uh, simple steps to the corner of the floor are now deducted by 0.1 each time, so that unfortunately means that we're going to see more people stag leaping and scissor kicking and all that, all that fun stuff. So I do a, a bit of that in my floor routine, but I also have some simple steps as well, so I'm going to have to kind of um, change the choreography of my floor routine to try and avoid those deductions, so that should be fun. Um, connection values on floor. If you link a D value skill to an A value skill, you used to get a 0.1 connection bonus, but now you have to link a D value skill to a B value skill or higher. I'm not 100% sure I think of this. I think a D to A connection should receive bonus, but I also think that a C to C connection should receive bonus. I'm not sure why it doesn't, because on high bar, if you connect two C skills together, you get a bonus, but on floor, it has to be a D to something else. And, I think most gymnasts would agree that a C to C combination is just as difficult as a D to A or a D to B combination. So I'm a little bit disappointed to see that there's no connection bonus for C to C. I thought that they would they would add that in this time round, but a floor routine can't contain more than two passes that receive connection bonus. So that um, I guess limits people like Kenzo Shirai because I think he has 
four or five connection bonus passes in his routine, so he's going to have to change what he does to keep his start value nice and high. Um, element group four is now uh, non-existent, that was the sideways element. Um, for floor it is just non-acrobatic forwards and backwards now, and all the Arabian elements are now included in the backward skills group, which I guess kind of makes sense because it's a, it's a backward takeoff. It is now a requirement um, to include a double somersault in a floor routine. If you don't have a double somersault then you get a point three deduction. That's only in senior competition, it doesn't exist for juniors, but I like that. I like that rule because it means that gymnasts are forced to kind of show versatility. You can't just twist. As far as I'm aware, Max Whitlock doesn't have a double somersault in his floor routine at the moment, so he's going to have to rejig his floor routine after the Olympics to make sure that he doesn't um, get that point three deduction. I'm interested to see what double somersault he chooses. Um, simple fall to prone elements are um, allowed but are no longer coded. So a fall to prone or a half twist to prone used to be an A value skill and now it's just it's just a thing you do to get down on the floor. It's not going to actually give you any difficulty. The next rule, which I think is one of the more controversial ones for floor, is that rollout skills, except for simple dive forward roll and half twist to dive forward roll, have been banned completely. Now I heard I heard a rumour that this might be the case back in the summer. Um, when I was in America last year, talking to some of the American Olympians, um, and I think this will this will divide opinion. The the logic is obviously that rollout skills are extremely dangerous. And they're trying to keep the sport safe, but I would argue that a lot of gymnastics is dangerous. Gymnasts and coaches know their limits extremely well, and they know how to teach these skills safely. So I think it's a little bit of a shame to lose that element of floor because they're exciting skills to work. They're exciting skills to watch, and I think gymnasts should be allowed to take that risk if they feel that they can do it safely. So I'm not overly keen on that rule. Um, it also means that I'm going to have to change my floor routine because I had a one and three quarter rollout in my floor routine. You're not allowed to do that anymore. So I'm going to have to find something to replace that with. But yeah, I kind of saw that one coming because in the 2008 code of points, you were allowed to do two rollouts. In the 2012 code of points, they limited it to one and you weren't allowed to connect them to anything else. So it was just kind of, it was heading in that direction. Um, but I think a lot of people don't really agree with that. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> um, press to Japanese handstand has been demoted to B value. Um, it used to be C value, you need to press from splits to get C value now. So I might have to have a play around with that one, I've never tried it from splits before. Um, double front tuck and pike with a half twist out are now worth 0.1 more than the regular double front or double pike, which I think is good because they used to be worth the same even though they're clearly more difficult. Um, tuck front full twist has now been demoted to D value and must be performed straight to get the full C value. This is bad news for me because I have a back two and a half punch front full tucked in my floor routine, so that's now um, a lower value pass. Um, so I'm going to have to try and work that with a with a straight full twist um, for next season. Similarly, tuck and pike front half twists or back half twists are now worth A value instead of B value. You have to do it straight to get the get the original B value. My first tumble is front double twist punch tuck half twist. So um, that won't even get a connection bonus anymore because it's D to A connection. So I'm going to have to work double twist punch straight half now to make sure that I still get that connection bonus. Um, double Arabian and double Arabian pike are now, wor now both worth D value. Which means that the only E value skill which I can do is now, has now been demoted to D value, which is fantastic. Um, I'm not 100% sure why that is because double Arabian pike is clearly more difficult. But I think have their, their reasons, I'm sure. Um, also, interestingly, because the sideways element group has been lost, um, double Arabian and double back half twist are now counted as the same skill. They're in the same box on the code. Um, so it appears that the timing of the twist is no longer essential to the allocation of the skill. If you do a double somersault with a half twist, whether it's at the front or at the back, it's the, it's the same move. So that's a, that's a bit of a weird one, but we'll work with it. And the last thing which I noticed for floor is that triple back tuck has been upgraded to H value. So you get a 0.8 bonus for a triple back tuck. Um, I think a lot of people have refrained from working the triple back in recent years because it hasn't been worth the risk, but now it's worth slightly more. I'm hoping that maybe people will start doing it again on floor. Uh, that would be exciting to see. Um, yeah, I, I didn't look at the pommel changes in too much depth because I don't know the pommel code of points all too well myself. So um, if you've read it and you, uh, there are any exciting changes to pommel, please let me know because I'd, I'd like to know. I just couldn't, didn't really want to sift through it in too much detail because I don't really understand what a lot of it is on about. But obviously um, there's only four element groups on pommel now. Element group three and four have been combined. Um, that's the, that's the main change there. So let's move on to rings. Um, 
There are some interesting changes on rings, the changes which are definitely going to change what I do in my rings routine. So, um, swings to handstand are no longer an individual element group requirement. Swings to handstand are included in that element group one of basic swing and kipping elements, which is nice because I included, even though I knew I couldn't do it very well, I included back up rise to handstand in my rings routine this season um, to get that 0.5 element group bonus. And now it, there's less pressure to include that kind of element, so I won't, won't necessarily have to do that. Although, as far as I can tell, not including a swing to handstand is still deductible by 0.3. So it's less of a problem, but it is still something which you definitely want to include if you can. So I'm definitely going to still work on it. They're getting strict on Yamawaki and Yonison elements, so that's double front or double pike in the hang. Um, if there's any visible support phase on the rings, then it's not going to count at all. This is bad news for me, because I've been working my Yamawaki recently, and it's been getting a lot better, but it's definitely not smooth enough that it would count at this stage from from reading what they're saying in the code of points. So again, I'm going to keep working on it, but it might not be ready to compete by next season. As far as I can tell, each final strength position can only be used once now, even if you enter into it in a different way. Um, I'm fairly sure you used to be able to do each end strength position twice, so you could have two crosses or two planches in your routine as long as you got into it in different ways, but now you're only allowed the same end position once, which I think is a bit of a shame, because there's only so many end positions which, you, which are possible. Um, but slight variations are allowed, so you can have straddle planche and planche, you can have cross and uh, L-set cross, for example. Um, but I think that's going to make some of the um, strength work on rings a little bit more difficult. Kip to L-set and front up rise to L-set are now included as swing to strength elements, which, going back to kind of university gymnastics and lower level gymnastics, is really, really good for those guys, because swing to strength used to be a really, really difficult element group to achieve. You had to do up rise to straddle planche or swing to cross or something like that. But front up rise to L-set and kip to L-set are a little bit more achievable, so it means that it's a lot easier to achieve that element group now, which is which is quite good for those low level guys. Um, okay, moving on to vault. Uh, most of the simple vaults in the code of points have 0.4 less start value than they previously did, um, but some of the harder vaults have the same start value they used to. So I think that's that they're just trying to kind of make the difference between the easier vaulting and the harder vaulting greater, so there's more more relative reward for doing the, the bigger vaults. And the other, the other change which I noticed for Vault is that Sukahara Vault is now worth 0.2 less than Handspring Front Tuck, and they used to both be worth the same. But um, I do actually agree with that decision, because I would say that a Suka is easier. So, moving on to P-bars now, um, a couple of um, kind of execution changes. Bending your legs too early in the bail from handstand for a moi or a giant is deductible. They're wanting you to keep your legs straight all the way down and bend them at horizontal or after horizontal. Um, I guess it, it looks cleaner that way, so that's fine. Um, four element groups, obviously. Um, long swings and under, under swings have been combined together, which I think is good, because it was, it was kind of difficult to distinguish between the two anyway. Um, and another little change for P-bars is that under somersault to hang is now worth A value rather than B value. Um, I was going to include under something to hang in my, in my P-bars routine next year. I probably still will, it's just a little bit disappointing that it won't be worth as much as it, it was before. And moving finally on to high bar, um, release elements now uh, need to be followed immediately by a giant swing. Um, you used to occasionally see people do a release and then go into an upstart, um, sometimes on purpose, but sometimes if they didn't grab the bar um, cleanly enough and they couldn't go into a giant, they'd just be able to recover it with an upstart. Um, you're going to get deducted for that now. Um, so they want you to catch clean and carry on the swing. Um, inverted grip swings are no longer a requirement for the element group, so um, that's certainly good for lower level athletes because that inverted grip is really uncomfortable and difficult to achieve. Um, I don't suppose it really makes any difference to the higher level gymnasts. Um, because you're allowed up to five um, elements from each element group, you can now do five release elements on high bar rather than four, um, which obviously is going to make high bar even more exciting than it, than it already was, so that should be, that should be good to watch. Um, and finally, some of the, some of the harder dismounts um, on high bar, triple front, triple back pike, full twisting triple back, um, have been upgraded to G value. So I think that's another, um, similar to the triple back on floor, that's Fig's attempts to try and get people to go for the bigger skills to make it a bit more exciting, to kind of incentivize um, dismounts which aren't just a double twist and a double straight, which is what nine out of 10 people do on high bar. So I, I like that. I think that's it's good that they're kind of incentivizing those harder dismounts so that we can see a bit more, a bit more variation. Um, so yeah, that was about it. 
Um, if there's anything which I missed, if you read through it, um, please let me know. I'd be interested to to, to learn more. Um, I'll post the link to the to the PDF um, down in the description box there. I think overall there's a lot of a lot of good changes and a couple of changes which I don't really um, agree with, but. It's, everyone's got to work by the same rules, so I guess it's fair and um, don't have to worry about it immediately. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you.